Welcome to What is Going Ohm's Synchronize Your Energies, the show that provides clear insights into the rapidly shifting energies that are upgrading human consciousness and evolving life on planet Earth. Each month, hosts Sandy Sedgbeer, Susie Miller, and Lee Harris share their observations and awarenesses and offer a stable means of synchronizing your energy fields so you can thrive, not just survive, during these tumultuous times. Here's your hosts, Sandy Sedgbeer, Susie Miller, and Lee Harris. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. I'm Lee Harris. And I'm Susie Miller. And you're listening to the July edition of Synchronize Your Energies, which is where you get to eavesdrop on our unscripted, off-the-cuff sharing of how the current shifts in energy and consciousness are impacting us and those around us, and very likely you too. As always, Susie will be calibrating our collective energy to see what energy tweaks we need in segment three to rebalance and synchronize our energies with the current flow so we can all navigate August with comfort and ease. So don't forget to stay tuned for that. So, guys, hi, how are you? What a month it's been. (laughs) Yeah. What a month indeed. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, two eclipses in July, six planets in retrograde all at once. Um, I think the best way to sum up that is it's a situation that could best be described as a bit of a spiritual boot camp. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I've been, been spending a lot of time with my darkness playing with my shadows, reflecting, reassessing, re-evaluating and revisiting all the kinds of things you do when planets are in retrograde. So it's really been an introspective month and a time for looking at and coming to terms with a lot of things that may be ugly and may be positive. A bit of everything in there. How about you? It's so true. It's so true. I was listening. Actually, Leo was listening to the your uh, your monthly update and you I think you talked about extremes or something like that in that um, video and I it's so true it just that's exactly how it fe- feels like this balancing of these extremes so I've found the need especially in the last you know probably two weeks or so for really extreme compassion you know it's um situations that I probably would have handled probably oh more uh with more diplomacy in the past <laughs> just didn't happen in the last couple of weeks you know and on the other side of that I was really getting to see that that some of the ways in which I had held back some of the, you know, just the awarenesses and what was really triggering me in the first place, it it was, I found it really helpful to actually kind of get to the place where I was expressing some of those things instead of just trying to work them out all internally, which is what I would typically do. So it seems like there's been this flip also of, you know, status quo, you know, the, the, the ways in which I was, you know, working with um, things that were coming up, that seems to be shifting right now for whatever reason. So how about you, Lee? Really, really, especially what you said, Sandy, that's very much been my experience too, the whole into the shadow, into, um, into history um, in, mm. in surprising ways. Because, of course, that comes up a lot, but it feels like it's been super intense um, this last month. And when I recorded the energy update you're mentioning, Susie, it's, you know, it's always intriguing to me as to how that's going to play out because I record it normally a week before the beginning of the month. But boy, oh boy, the surfing the extremes thing for, for me internally and externally has been mm. right, on the, right on the nose. Um, and the other thing I'm noticing is people around me um, the, the thing that seems to have really gone up in, in, in who I'm meeting and knowing recently is a lot of people struggling with health and um, physical challenges. That's always been there the last few years, but it seems to have gone up uh, recently. Well, this is why I love keeping an eye on the astrology, because it really makes sense of it all to me. And when you look at you know, what those planets that are all retrograde are about... Um, you know, it, you can begin to see it, step back a bit from being completely 
driven by it. And then, you know, my, my teacher always used to say to me, the stars impel, they do not compel. And if you don't use astrology, it will use you, it will drive you. And then you'll get into all kinds of situations that you've got to get yourself out of and wonder about them afterwards. But if you know what's, you know, what the energies are like, you can actually work with it and not control it, but kind of ride it more easily. I think I was I was absolutely amazed in these last few weeks, especially at at the depth of the return to history. You know, I mean, we've been through mm. many retrogrades. You know, uh, you know, every month. You know, every they're always around. But the it's like I don't know. I was I think I just was this month a little bit surprised, and it really gave me pause to reflect on you know, literally like on a lifetime, you know, that this, this particular lifetime, this incarnation, what has this incarnation meant? What hasn't it meant? What, you know, what has been available? What's not been available? Um, And almost kind of, um, I know that for me, a lot of times, like I'll start writing, I'll start rewriting my experience. I'll, I'll write it I'll start writing as if the experience that um, I'm wishing to bring into fruition is already existing in the now moment. And as I was, I've been doing a lot of that over the last couple of weeks. And as I've been writing it, you know, again, it's, um, yeah, first this deep reflection of what this lifetime has also, has really been about. And then, you know, what would I like my current, my new incarnation in this now moment to um, really express as? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been interesting and fiery and um, fun mm. and challenging and all of it all at the same time. So that extreme, that, that surfing the extreme thing really touched mm. base with me for sure. Yeah, well, I've certainly, you know, partly by design, having kept an eye on the astrology, but partly also driven by what I feel, um, which is another, you know, aspect of it all. I've been really reassessing a lot of things in my life. Um, Mm -hmm. And Lee, you were talking about a lot of people having health issues. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, Chiron, the wounded healer, is retrograde as well so that's going to make us look at our spiritual health our emotional health our physical health our psychological health and just you know take start taking better care of ourselves yeah and and it's interesting you bring up reassessing because i was just thinking yesterday i'm surprised that things that i was moving forward on in kind of as recently as march um, I'm now changing. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's quite a short period of time. I mean, things change and move all the time, but it feels like a lot of things um, just in my own life. And I'm seeing that with other people too. Um, there seems to be such a shorter time span now between the plans that we might move forward on and how quickly they either change, fall apart, or lead us in a different direction. It's really given me... Um, a very visceral sense of this speeding of time that we've talked about for years, um, seeing how that's playing out big time right now. No pun intended, sorry. Mm. (laughs) That makes so much um, sense, Lee. Go ahead. Go ahead, Go on, Susie. Oh, I was just going to say it. That makes so much sense because um, the, the completion loops seem like they're much tighter and the falling apart loops feel like they're much tighter. It's, it's, you know, it's like, oh, this is an amazing idea. I'm so excited to get started with this. Let's go into it full force and put 100% into it. And and then all of a sudden, you know, within sometimes, you know, months, sometimes days and (laughs) sometimes hours, it's like, yeah, the energy's not there to sustain it, you know. Um, And I'm not necessarily taking that as the personal energy is not there to sustain it. It's just that something feels like it has altered or shifted um, 
you know, in the timeline or in the reality or in the potential and possibility, or maybe it's just simply complete. You know, maybe that experience or expression is just complete. But uh, that that makes perfect sense. Lots of those going on. Mm. I think it, what were you going to say? Sandra? It's really. I was going to say. I think it's really a time when, you know, we have to get real. We can't play around anymore. We don't have the luxury of time, I don't think. Time's speeding up, everything's speeding up. You know, the world, the planet needs us all to be conscious and it needs us to be present. And, you know, we can faff around and, you know, spend time like Neptune always does, you know, with our dreams and our illusions. But we really have to wake up and face the realities. Um, you know, the, the ones that we would rather avoid and the ones that we need to face to make life more meaningful. Yeah. yeah and for me, I, I, I absolutely feel like facing those realities, um, not to solidify them and make them, make them who we are, but face those realities so that we can, so that we can choose this now yes. incarnation so that we can choose this now moment. And, you know, I was, I, Sandy, I mean, you know, I've had, you know, my ups and downs with all kinds of, you know, health things as well over the years. And what I was noticing is that, like, all of a sudden, just recently, like, you know, you know, those times where you go to somebody, um, whether it be a naturopathic doctor or an allopathic doctor or whomever you feel like you need to for your support. And, you know, time and time again, I know for a lot of energetic sensitives, they go and there's really nothing conclusive, right? You know, there's nothing, mm -hmm. there's nothing that says this is what it is, right? And so that can make people feel really uncomfortable. And I know it has me over time as well. And, and, you know, what I mean by this whole thing about the choosing you know, choosing the now moment, choosing this now incarnation. I, I literally was sitting around kind of going, you know, what I really need is I need somebody who can see multidimensionally like I can, but has the medical background to know what they're seeing in all of those different realities. So that if something's way out in my field that is impacting me um, and it feels very physical, but it's not showing up in the medical testing, I want to know what that is, and I want to know how to be able to adjust that. And so where I used to get really frustrated, and, you know, if I would reflect back on how that, that had gone so far, um, I, I didn't want to stay in that frustration. I wanted to stay in a new creation. And what's really cool is, is I did just that. It's like I had this opportunity just on Sunday to meet this MD who's also a shaman, and so I had this session with him. It was amazing to have this session and to be able to have some of these physical symptomologies really be released and reduced. Um, and it wasn't showing up in the physical realm, but it was definitely impacted in my physical body by what was showing up in the more subtle realms. So, so I think these opportunities to kind of go, yeah, this is what this is how it has been. This is what's been going on. And this is what we choose from that, you know, in this now moment, what I call this now incarnation. Um, it, it, it can really shift things around. So and I think that's the great part of this time, time loop being so tight, you know, because when we get it, we get it mm -hmm. and it flips and it changes. Yeah. I like this choice. Idea of That's the that word. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it it it's almost like someone's thrown all the board pieces up in the air right now. That's how it feels. It's mm -hmm. like there were pieces on the on the plane, the game board that were in place, and suddenly it's all been thrown up in the air. And some of them you're trying to catch, and some of them you're running away from um, before mm -hmm. they land. It's it's very it's a very interesting time, and it's interesting for me to notice this in the conscious people that I know who'll talk about it, but to see how it's affecting people who might not track this kind of stuff or put any awareness on the way they're feeling with any observation, um, because they too have, seem quite spun out. How are you dealing with that, 
Lee, I mean, what's your methodology of of dealing with all those pieces flying around? Yeah, you know, just for me personally, and I don't think this is a method as much as a response, um, in the last week I have just gone very, very quiet where possible. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've needed to be very internal when I'm not, you know, required to be engaged in something. Um, and just taking a lot of time and quiet... Um, yeah, that, that, that has been it. I mean, there are things that I do every day that help me. Um, like I, you know, I exercise six mornings a week. And so there are things that kind of keep me um, on the level. But that's also what tells me something's going on. <laughs> because I think if you have, yeah. a, you know, if you have a kind of a kind of core practice that, you know, keeps you fairly aligned, you really. With the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. 911, what is your emergency? My kid shot himself. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and End Family Fire. Welcome back to Synchronize Your Energies with me, Sandy Sedgbeer. Me, Lee Harris. And me, Susie Miller. And apologies for the little hiccup before the break. We're having some Mercury retrograde um, technical issues right now, but bear with us. Lee, you got cut off as you were telling us something really interesting. Yeah, I got plunged into the very silence I was speaking about on the other end of the line, which I thought was hilarious. Um, yeah, Fancy so, that. <laughs> so I was, um, I was just saying that, you know, one of the things I've been doing recently is is, is, is just being really quiet wherever I can um, and stepping back. Um, so you were asking about methods and, and everything, Susie, and, and at the moment that just that just feels like my instinct, even though when I step back, it seems to be that you, you, my experience is I step into a lot of stuff when I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then if I stay with it, I, after, you know, anything from a few, a few, an hour or a few hours to a day, I suddenly have clarity of which, what to do next, what, what piece to move next. Um, I've also found it really therapeutic to rearrange, tidy and organize. That has been something that, that has been good. Um, in my literally in the house in the office um, because that seems to be partly what's going on energetically so matching that in the physical environment has been helpful for me do you know doing mundane excuse me doing mundane 
physical chores is a great way of dealing with this because as you say you are moving energy around physically and at the same time you're allowing space because they are mundane you can kind of switch off part of the brain and just allow your unconscious to bring up what needs to come up mm. yeah absolutely and um and 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 i think part of that is balancing the extreme of the world that's very um well, yeah, the, the the world that isn't mundane right now, because because not much looks mundane when you look out there. Um, so and same within within just personal relationships and what people are going through. So I think balancing it with that grounded mundane is so important. Yeah, but when you I'll say, say you know what's out there, I mean what's out there is a reflection of what's in here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I, I do ascribe to that to some degree, um, but I also I I, I, I would I, I tend to experience it this way. I think that what we're looking at is a reflection of what we're choosing to focus on internally. So there's a whole load of things going on in the world today, but where we'll focus is what we're gravitating towards or what we're mirroring for ourselves, what we're wanting to process. But I do also think that there is a much bigger transformation arc at large on the planet right now mm. that, that's not very personal, that's mm. something that we're all collectively going through that's, that's far bigger than us personally. So I guess that's the way I experience it. It's kind of twofold for me. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, Lee. And, and I think it's the reason why I keep trying to go back to compassion for myself too. You know, it's like, in, like you say, in any given day, um, you know, there are highs and lows and looking at some of the really kind of um, the patterning or the, the, the dark, I'm going to call it the darker aspects, not that they're uh, not darker as in evil, darker as in unseen, unknown, you know, un, unconscious of, you know, and all of a sudden they are coming into consciousness. And you know, I think... Um, you know, it's all too easy, um, you know, and when we look in the outer world, it's all too easy to beat, you know, beat ourselves up or beat somebody else up, you know, to project that energy, you know, either inward or outward. And but this opportunity to have this choice point where we actually say, OK, this is what's here in this moment. And like you were saying, the response, um, the what, is, what do we want the response actually to be? And so that practice for me lately has just been, you know, okay, today is an absolute shit show. And at the same time, can I have compassion for myself in that process? You know, or watching somebody else that, that, that you know, comes into my sphere of, of influence and, and, you know, they're having a really hard day and they're wanting to project that toward me. You know, it's like, you know, really understanding that they're having the same shit show of a day, you know, that so mm -hmm. um, and just trying to find that. And it's not easy to do that, I think, sometimes. I mean, because the, the instinct is like, just rip it out, you know, just get it gone, you know, deal with it and have it be over with. Um, but I don't really think it's about that. I think it's I think it's really about finding some sense of neutrality or some sense of compassion or love for our very human condition right now that is extremely transformative. You know, what I keep coming back to over and over again is the saying, know thyself. And I do think that the spiritual arena has to a degree done a bit of a disservice to people by telling telling us you know we've all got to be positive and we've got to be manifesting all the things we want all the time um, I think it's actually really good sometimes to go into the depths and look what's there because you know we, we paper over all of those cracks and we push them away and oh no I'm not going to focus on that because that's negative I'm going to focus on all the positive things I want well sometimes we have to dig through all of that negative st stuff to find some gold nuggets that we actually want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah not papering over it by any stretch but and I also you know to use that it's that twofold piece it's that opportunity to be present to what's arising 
within each and every one of us. And then to know that we also have the power to choose from that awareness. You know, without awareness, there's no choice. So, so whether we're aware of, you know, I mean, I was watching some patterns in the last couple of weeks. I'm going, oh, that's why my relationships go the way they go. Oh, that's why that has been playing out mm-hmm. in this particular way, right? So in that very moment, I can, one, beat myself up or I can just say, oh, okay, from that awareness, I choose um, I choose this. And then I can focus on that choice point so that I can create a different reality. And the cool thing that, for me anyway, that feels really up, does feel uplifting is when that choice point is made and that attention point is focused on, you know, knowing that we're all powerful enough to create something else. You know, Mm. we're all powerful Mm. enough to create beyond whatever those limitations were. You know, I just... As you're speaking, Susie, I'm looking at um, a description of Pluto retrograde, and it says we're often told to hide our shadows, to lie about our real feelings and put on a composed face. However, since Pluto retrograde in Capricorn began on April the 22nd, those shadows have been coming out to play, letting all your ugly float to the surface, even though this image is really pretty. Um, is actually very empowering. We remember Mm. how our scars have made us stronger. We reflect on the strangeness stirring in our soul, recalling what it is about us that makes us so unique. I mean, Pluto is all about transformation and mysteries. And this is what we're being asked to, you know, we can't transform if we don't understand. Well, and it's so, that that put it just in a nutshell, Sandy, I'm so glad you read that because it was trying to, what I was trying to express in the first segment today is, you know, that, you know, what used to be, um, you know, holding this energy back was now being expressed as the energy for what it was, you know, no, this is where it is, this is what I'm feeling, this is, and where I might have shut that down before or not said that you know, worked on it internally, there's something, just what you said, there's something so empowering about being able to have those conversations and to be able to move through them, you know, to be able to move through them with the people that you love and in those interactions, instead of just holding on to it and letting it fester in one way or another. And what I've noticed anyway, is that when I do express it, instead of try to just work it on, work it on the inside, what I'm noticing is the reflection back is really, you know, very genuine, very loving, you know, that that this opportunity to work through things is 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 true and real and maybe very different than what might the belief system that got imprinted in the first place. Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it feels to me like future future energy templates being created. It's interesting as I sit and listen, it's kind of a reminder to me of that's what we're doing. Um, because yes. how we're going to be in the future, we, we can't be the way that we've all been. And we can't be the way that we see, if you like, majority consciousness playing in and around us right now. And of course, we're part of that too, whether we're in it a lot or whether we're in it some, um, I think that's what we're birthing at the moment. But it's, it's, um, kind of not visible at the moment as to what it is that we're doing here right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is what happens, you know, when when you go through that period of chaos that precedes, you know, the building of or the creation of something new. It's very hard to see your way through all that rubble. Yeah. Yes. Lee, you, you haven't had the floor as much as Susie and I had today Um, and I I know it's early for you where you are um, and not so early for me Um, but um, in a few moments we'll be doing Susie's energy process is there anything else that you want to share that we haven't given you an opportunity to no I haven't I haven't felt that I haven't had the floor and remember I like silence right now so <laughs> it's been lovely it's been lovely to listen and uh, to, to 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 hear what's what what's going on and and I, I just I guess I I echo what Susie said about self-compassion 
by the way, I always love hearing what, what you say about the astrology, Sandy, because I don't follow astrology, but I really like astrology. So it's always good to hear, um, you know, that map playing out. But no, I think the compassion for self, um, because especially when you are someone who's wired toward the sensitive or the deep feeling, um, it, it's tricky when you're in these waters because, you know, it doesn't necessarily doesn't feel good and it doesn't necessarily sometimes look like how you think you would like to be or should be to show up in the world. So, yeah, I've been practicing that same compassion for self that it's okay to just step back or step sideways as much as I need to, um, which isn't my norm to this degree, but it's absolutely what's been called for. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I really, I guess I just echo that sentiment that Susie shared earlier. You know, I sometimes, when I'm listening to you guys, I think it must be quite hard for you to to share some of the things that you share, especially on this particular show, because so many people are, you know, have their ideas about you, who you are, because they look to you for all the answers um, and they assume that you've got them all and um, probably don't want to know that you haven't. But um, <laughs> do, do you find that difficult sometimes just just being you? Um, Lee? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't find it difficult being me in my my very simple everyday life, which is really quite a quiet life and quite simple and revolves around, unless we're traveling, revolves around, you know, the same same few buildings, the same few stores, the same few people that I meet in those stores. Um, but of course, when you when you do your work, I, I, I think a long time ago, I was able to come to terms with knowing that um, just because somebody really gets something out of your work, it doesn't mean that you're not capable of highly disappointing them when they meet you because they want you to be a certain <laughs> way. Like I learned pretty quickly that um, some people, not everybody, but some people assumed that I must just be constantly talking about energetics all day long and studying them. And, and I think it was a bit of a shock for them when they would see, you know, uh, you know, that wasn't necessarily what I was doing at dinner or so. Yeah, I, I think I, I feel like it's the same thing we all go through when you, when you do this kind of work where you're a visible person to a certain group, but it's just amplified. Because I think we're all making misperceptions about each other all the time. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's how I feel about it. Susie? Mm. Yeah, I, I think that it, for the people that have hung out with me for any length of time whatsoever, you know, either personally or professionally, I, I think it's very clear that the flaws are all over the place, you know, <laughs> it's like, um, and, you know, and I, I think that for me too, Lee, it's like over time, I, um, I really love, especially like when I'm doing live events or when I'm working in big groups with all of that energy and that collective consciousness of the group, I really, I really do love that. And I love it so much that um, I'm not sure at those moments that there's much of Susie, the personality really there. And so during those moments, that feels really amazing and people can take from it or not take it from it, whatever they would like. Um, it's after the fact um, when it's after the fact when I'm, when Susie, the personality is there, that's when I really feel the need to retreat, honestly, um, mm -hmm. and have a little bit of space to myself because that's when whatever somebody has received from that experience, they're so excited about, and it's wonderful. Um, it's wonderful that they're excited about it. And at the same time, you know, it's, it's just a lot um, to interact with at that point. So I'm, I've mm -hmm. learned over the years a lot of um, self-care around, yeah, around what that feels like to me and knowing that I have to, I have to take care of me in that kind of situation. Um, so, yeah, and it's, but yeah, there's no, there's no mistake that there are all kinds of mistakes being made. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, well, talking about self-care, now's a good time to give us mm -hmm. all a little bit of that. So um, I don't know what you've been calibrating, what you think <laughs> we need to tweak our energy, Susie, but okay. I trust you implicitly, so go for it. All right. Um, so and we've got about 10 minutes. Is that what we're going to do? Um, yeah, maximum, okay. yeah, maximum. Okay, okay, great. Um, all right, so let's just check in with the collective consciousness of of us and of those who are listening in, and let's just see what's what's kind of been highlighted in that field based on what we talked about today. So let's all just take a nice deep inhale and exhale first, just bringing ourselves right back to our bodies. Um, and this whole theme of of compassion and seems to be coming up and and where compassion huh okay i'm just going to go sandy and lee where it's directing me um and what of where compassion has maybe not been offered or not been felt or not been given to ourselves in the past it's it's almost like there's this rub up against our old programming and um what we can allow ourselves to be now and that rub seems to be somewhere around yeah where what we were imprinted with around compassion or lack thereof what was demonstrated to us around compassion or lack thereof, and how we're trying to move forward in compassion. So everywhere where, where the old imprinting is rubbing up against the new desires or um, the, the, the awareness of, of the way to be or the way we can be now, let's pull all that energy up and out of our fields multidimensionally. That's a big big field and there's and it's it feels like there's chaos in there like there's a bumping up against there so let's pull all that energy up and out we'll place that in a sphere we're going to blue star that energy spin it all out spin it all out spin all the chaos out to calm spin all the past to the present out in calm Spin it out in compassion. There we go. And then compress and condense that sphere back into that blue star. And we're going to drop that blue star right into our own hearts. And we'll implode that into billions of frequencies of light. When you implode it, make sure you let it go out 360 degrees around you. Make sure it goes out behind you, not just out in front of you. Okay, so nice deep inhale and exhale again. Let's let that compassion settle into the heart. So the next piece that you're showing me is, um, I think it's a reflection of what Lee was talking about earlier as well, as far as finding our own rhythm right now, finding, literally understanding what is necessary for each and every one of us. And um, sometimes it can feel like we're attempting to survive, but I think that there's really an opportunity here to thrive. But the thriving comes with really finding what is, um, what's necessary for us. So, you know, is it movement? Is it stillness? You know, is it expression? Is it kind of holding on to the information? Um, you know, just really giving ourselves the opportunity to be present to ourselves and ourselves now. So the mind will want to say it makes, you know, well, that's not the way I'm supposed to be or that's not the way it's meant to be or I should or I would or I could. No, right here, right now, what is needed and required? Can we gift ourselves? Can we gift ourselves with our own presence? 
can we show up for ourselves? Because that's the most important. Um, that's the only thing that can show up for us, right? Like, can we show up for ourselves in that way? And uniquely, that opens up everybody else showing up as well. So everywhere where there has been a, you know, the woulds, the shoulds, the coulds that pull us away from the now moment, pull us away from our presence of ourselves now, let's collect all of that energy up and out of our fields multidimensionally, place that in a sphere, and we'll blue star that energy. and spin that all out, spin it to clear, and take that totality of self, that, that sphere, and compress it right back into that blue star. And we're gonna drop that blue star right back into our own hearts as well, implode it out. Billions of frequencies of light, we're literally restructuring the fields multidimensionally, 360 degrees. Okay, so um, so we've kind of dealt with the rub of the the past and the present, and we've kind of dealt with this ability to be to be present, to really know what is needed in any given moment. The other thing that looks like it has just been, lacking um, and not because we are lacking, but just, you know, as we get so focused on the shifts and the changes and the chaos and all the energies and what we're feeling, it's like sometimes we forget that, that there's a place of joy, there's a place of stillness, there's a place of calm that resides within us, right? It's, it's, it's already there within our totality. And so um, I think that bringing that to the surface now, let's just bring that energy more to fruition, um, more to into the physical experience. Um, it's It's been hiding behind all of the, it's been hiding in the depths is the best way I can say it, or that's the way you're showing it to me. It's like when I look in the fields, I'm looking deep, deep, deep down in the fields and there it is. It's like, oh, there's joy. There's calm, there's compassion, there's neutrality, there's love, right? So let's just make that whole energy bigger. Um, <laughs> deep inhale and exhale. So the last piece that I really want to address um, before we stop here is, is this whole idea of allowing ourselves to live beyond linear, right? So whatever that means to you, whatever it means to give yourself permission to live beyond linear, let's make that matter right now. Okay, kick in a matoroko materia son, that a kid coma. Nice deep inhale and exhale, everybody. All right, I think that's a nice tune up for now. So just bringing yourselves back gently and easily and back to you, Sandy. Always so calming, really kind of settles my energy that does. Yes. Um, well, we're almost out of time now. Lee, anything you want to say before we leave? No, that was lovely. It's, uh, it's nice to, it's nice to <laughs> bask in the glow of that. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> thank you, Lee. Susie, thank you. Anything you want to add, no? No, all good. Yeah, nonlinear, okay. nonlinear moving forward. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, well, let's bring this one to a close before the retrograde planets are before us. Um, as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this month's show and whether anything that we've shared reflected your experiences or inspired you to look at something from a different angle. So don't be shy. Write us care of show at gmail.com. And finally, you can check out Lee and Susie's profound bodies of work at leeharrisenergy.com and susiemiller.com. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'll be back next week with another edition of What Is Going On. Till then, it's goodbye from me, Sandy Sedgbeer. And from me, Lee Harris. And from me, Susie Miller. <laughs>